Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed, we are honored to be here and we are serving not only to Pakistan, even to American peace perspective, and our, we are celebrating our friendship. Definitely, friendship always has some phases. Sometimes we have difficulties, sometimes we are smooth, and sometimes it is ideal. We want to make US-Pakistan friendship ideal. And how we could contribute? There are so many ways that we could contribute to make this friendship ideal. We are uh, having a very distinguished man of US capital and uh, the person who is trying to contribute to make this friendship smooth and ideal. He is one of the most powerful men of Washington DC in media perspective and uh, he is the chairman of the Washington Times, Mr. Tom McDevitt. Yeah. Mr. Tom McDevitt <laughs> is the one that most recently we have seen that how North and South Korea are being, you know, collaborating and working together for peace in that region. And believe in me, last year, uh, last month, we were together in Korea, and Mr. Tom McDevitt, Mr. Dan Burton, and uh, Honorable Congressman Don, Dan Burton, and CIA former chief, Mr. James Woolsey. All they were there, and I was also part of that conference, and how he was working hard, being together two countries, and he shared one great perspective that what is the unification of uh, North and South Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, our honorable speaker now, which I'm presenting, Mr. Tom McDevitt. Tom McDevitt is also president of the Universal Peace Federation. This federation is working with 170 nations in the world. And this federation is most powerful and most vocal to the world peace. And uh, Mr. Tom McDevitt, when I, uh, you know, always talk about him and speak about him, I always say that he is the most compassionate man as well. He wants to work, he wants to make this world peaceful. And he is trying to work on great project and definitely it will be happening soon. He wanted to give a gift to Pakistani nation as a special report for Pakistan. And he is working with a team, not only from Pakistan side, from the Washington side, the Washington Times side, that report will be coming soon. I'm very honored and uh, very happy to invite Mr. Tom McDevitt at the podium and please welcome my distinguished guest. Yeah. Thank you so much, my dear friend, Dr. Cosme. I've known Dr. Cosme for more than two decades, and uh, through dozens and even hundreds of exchanges together, both in America and around the world, I have come to know through him and through many other friends, including Ambassador Chowdhury, uh, the passion, the intelligence, the creativity, the significance globally of the people of Pakistan. My special interest today is uh, thanks to the Pakistan American Congress for holding this event I attended last year as well. And uh, as Dr. Cosme said, uh, we were together in Asia just recently. And I wear two hats. One is a for-profit media communications role as chairman of the Washington Times. And second, in the nonprofit space, I'm the chairman and president of UPF Universal Peace Federation International. So I want to touch on two issues, relationships and communication. In terms of relationships, a couple of the key projects we're working on that directly affect Pakistan and the region is through the UPF effort called the International Association of Parliamentarians for Peace. It was launched almost two years ago in Korea, now in over 80 countries, over 3,000 incumbent parliamentarians, including about 40 from your nation of Pakistan, 
have joined together in a new global coalition for the sake of peace, substantial peace on earth in our time, addressing the critical challenges in the world on all sides of the planet in all the continents. I was in Korea two years ago when we launched it. We went then, then went to Africa, both East and West Africa, then to Tokyo, to London, to uh, Costa Rica, Paraguay, and then back to Korea, and then over 80 countries launched this effort. It was a set of uh, principles based on interdependence, mutual prosperity, and universal values. I just came from Vienna, where we had 10,000 opinion leaders gathered in a stadium there for a conference, and some 300 parliamentarians. Prior to that, in Senegal, Africa, 1,200 gathered, including from Pakistan and from all over the Middle East. There's something brewing. As a media person, I can see the surface of communications where we see all the tension and the struggle and the strife. But underneath that, there's something moving in the world, I observe, that is really precious. And it has to do with building bridges that are essentially interfaith by being ambassadors for peace. And Dr. Cosme has helped lead that way in your country, where we have hundreds of people committed to this, uh, to this effort. The second issue I wanted to mention is communications. In the Washington Times, we certainly we reach millions and millions of Americans every day through our website. And we recently started working with some of the experts in your country because I felt, as chairman, there's really a need to help the American public, especially the opinion elites, understand the dynamics of Pakistan, understand the importance of our relationship, and build for the future. And to that end, uh, we looked at various different areas that I would advise we really concentrate on to help the American public realize what Pakistan is and who you are. And that it is not simply the image that somehow Pakistan is leaning towards helping people of, of, of terrorism and bad will. That's not the case. And so with that in mind, in talking with your ambassador, we outlined several key points that I'll leave you with. One, we need to communicate the importance of the alliance of Pakistan and America. And we need to have the right people say that. Thank you. There's also the issue of the history of Pakistan. And going back to the founding principles of your country and the esteemed president, the founding father, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and his background, the fact that even Thomas Jefferson was interested in the Quran, and so that's something that most people have no idea of. The profiles of your first cabinet, the first 70 years, it's such a rich history. Next, the national character of Pakistan. You have such a unique country, the merger of so many different mountain ranges, such character of your country, the Pakistan contributions of Pakistani Americans is so vital, so vital for people to understand. Few Americans, even the most educated, don't realize that story. And then finally, why Pakistan and America matter to each other. So we put together an idea to create a special report to tell this story, both in the digital space and in print so that every member of Congress could see that. At the heart of the matter are the principles of peace, that we are all really one family under one creator. And I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words to that extent. We're living in a time where innovation in medicine and in technology and in so many other areas is, was unimaginable even 10 years ago. The same level of innovation and brilliance needs to be applied to the realm of diplomacy and statesmanship, and it's all based on building human relationships in which we see that we really truly come from one origin. We have one destiny as a human race, and we belong to one another as brothers and sisters under one set of universal values. Let us work together to build peace in this era, and thank you so much for your work together. Thank you very much, Mr. Tom McDevitt, for your time and uh, your generous views about not only for Pakistan, about people of Pakistan, even for the humanity. Because we feel 
that we are one nation under God. Because Pakistan is suffering a lot. Pakistan has uh, sacrificed a lot just for one thing. That was a peace perspective. As uh, Honorable Ambassador and uh, Honorable President of the Azad Jammu and Kashmir, uh, Mr. Khan has told to the audience that how we are suffering for the peace in that region and how we keep dear peace in our lives as a Muslim, as a good Pakistani, and even in all over the world, wherever Pakistanis are, they are working very hard for the peace and prosperity of the world. Here, because we are the contributors for this society, who they have contributed a lot, not only in the field of medical, medical field, in education, and even our people are making proud to the world when they are winning the Oscars, when they are getting the Nobel Peace Prize, when our kids are being recognized as a world, uh, world peace lovers. So this is very important that we are, we are on the world. And here we have one, uh, you know, one beautiful lady from the capital, Mrs. Toby Dugan, and she is, uh, uh, you know, uh, willing to present one book to the Honorable President of uh, Adha Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, this book is uh, all about uh, peace and prosperity and how Islam sees the peace. So thank you very much for... Uh, uh, yeah.